So the answer is yes, we can definitely make these cables or pipes bend. And let me show you how, because there's a few different techniques depending on the look that you're going for. So let's actually remove the grid because it looks horrible in video anyway. So shift A, create some cubes and also enable the axis because this is going to be important. So shift D, not enabling it, but just keeping track of the axis we're using. Don't worry about enabling it. Okay, so this is your setup, sort of. Uh, curve wire generator and then we switch to the array and this happens right so the array mode needs some sort of input access to generate this grid of control points Let me increase that make them larger so by default it's using the z axis but it's not any z axis it's using the object z axis which means that we could rotate these objects and the array or the grid pattern will follow so we can do this after the fact, so I can rotate these right now, but I would advise against that because basically we just lose all of our wire generator settings. So instead, I'm going to delete this and for the best results, I can rotate these before I run the tool. So R minus 45 and R minus 90 to do this, select those, run the tool again. Ooh, now we're getting somewhere. So I can also set the handles to be aligned. And if that happens, just reverse the handles. So this is auto, this is aligned. Not much difference in this specific example. I'll try to find another one. And uh, uh, there's not, like, it's not the perfect bend. So there's a lot of things I can do. I can move this in uh, X to try to do that. And uh, like I said, when you move things or when you do anything else outside of the wire generator tool, you lose your settings. So to change the curve handles now, I'd have to uh, do something like this, which is a little bit more annoying to do. So try to reposition your stuff before, but this can be tricky because this one needs to be somewhere right here, right? So instead, I'm just going to delete all of this and I'm going to do this. So I have four now instead of just one here in the middle. And the reason I had to recreate the entire thing is because the wire generator does not keep track of your selections. So I could select this and then this and then these and it will still flow correctly because it depends on creation order. And that's just how Blender works. Blender doesn't keep track of selection order, unfortunately. I wish it, it would, but it doesn't. <clears throat> so that's why I had to remake all of those primitives. R minus 90. R minus 90. I very much wish wire generator could uh, uh, have access to some sort of selection order API. Anyway, so shift A, curve, wire generator. Ooh, even cleaner than before. And we can still mess around with the curve handles, but there is one feature that might work against you. I don't know if you notice this. The innermost cable has a thinner radius or a shorter radius than the outermost cable. So again, that's a feature, it's not a bug. <laughs> but I realize now that it might work against some people who want the radius to be exactly the same on all of their wires. So I'll, I'll probably end up adding that on a feature update. And so that, that's, that'll be a while. So if you do care about having the exact same radius throughout, I'm going to show you a different technique for that. So not many people know this because this was the first feature that Curve Basher came with. This is how the add-on was born. <laughs> so I'm going to create a plane and then I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. And let's change the color before it blinds anyone. So I'm going to right click subdivide shift R a few times. So what I want to demonstrate is that Curve Basher works on uh, selection, on edge selections. So I can select these edges, press J. Ooh, so hopefully you can see where I'm going with this. I could, for instance, let's do this, Alt F, and then bevel this. And then simply select this edge loop and press J. Ooh, and I have an idea. We can use maybe the flat, split preset and rotate it. <laughs> so this is going to give us the exact same result as the wire generator where the innermost cable is uh, the shortest one. So 
So that's probably not what you want, and this is not what I'm trying to do with this example. So let's go back to the simple pipe, and instead just do this a bunch of times. So I am going to select this face. I think it's F, the hotkey for you. I changed that to Alt F, so I'm not really sure. Uh, and I'll do that. Okay, so now I can just select all of these verts. Press B to bevel. No, Control Shift B, I think, for you. <laughs> and this is how we can guarantee to have a unified bevel radius throughout. So the problem here is selecting all of that. I know for a fact that Blender is not very good at selecting edge loops, so I'm going to try to help it out. This one selects just fine, but these look something to do with all these angons, I don't know. I should take a look at Moto. Okay, so I think I got all those edge loops. And now using a simple pipe, you can see that all of them have the exact same radius. Cool, but here's, here's yet another way of doing this. So this one is a lot more fun, and I think I'm gonna turn the grid back on. So I have a special script that gives me some primitives. I made these scripts, by the way, they're free. But if you don't have uh, have these, uh, it's fine. I'm talking about the single vertex, so I'm just going to show you how to do it with the cube because I don't expect everyone to have my scripts. Okay, so cube, edit mode. So make sure all of your vertices are selected. M, merge at center. So now we have an object that has a single vertex. And I'm going to turn on snapping. Absolute grid snap, and then just press G and move this to any point. Cool. E to extrude and then just create some pipes and you can create any sort of complex design that you want and what I'm doing is just basically creating an edge loop so we can do something like this add a modifier a bevel modifier apply it to vertices and then change the count something like that so this is what it looks like this is just an extruded edge and I'm going to duplicate it just so we can keep a backup. So Shift D, right click, H to hide it. So now I have this backup hidden. So I'm just going to reselect this one. And if I try to run, if I try to run Curve Basher here, it's not going to work because it doesn't know what to do with this object. But if I go into Edit Mode and I select all the edges and I press J, it's going to apply this modifier, turn it into a curve, and then apply any preset that I want. So that's another way of creating some very complex pipes. And as usual, because this is curved now, we can just replace it with any other preset. Okay, enough of that. So that's uh, a few ways of creating uh, bending pipes.